All right, all right, all right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Angular live stream. Your boy Mark Thompson from the Angular team is here. My headphone cable is wrapped around my armchair, and I couldn't even get myself together. But friends, I'm here. Happy to see all of you. Thank you for coming in to hang out with Jeremy Elborn. My co-host will be here shortly. Today, we're going to do something fun. I'm going to actually write some code. Uh, I got to build an app. And I'm going to just try to use some of the new Angular features to, to do it. I'm going to be using 17.1. It should be fun. Let's see who we got in the building. We got quite a few people in the building. Let's go. Always, always a fantastic, magnificent, our boy Lars in the building. Abela, what's going on? Let's get in the building. Let's see who else do we have here. Okay. Kayanta. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I apologize, but good to have you here. All the way from Madagascar, Tolo Janhari. Jan Jan I think I said that, Patrick Andre. Good to see you. Let's go, Matthew. Bonjour. Bienvenue. Uh, let's see who else is in the building. Let's see. Okay, G Law. G Law keeping it, keeping it busy. Okay, okay, okay. Joe Alternate. Joe Alternate. What's go? Let's go. Let's go, Natalia. What up? What up? How are you doing? I met. What's going on? Gabriel de los Rios. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Patrick, what's good? Alpha Frog, let's go. Yo, I've been practicing. Friends, you don't know this about me, but I love heavy metal. Uh, that's one of my favorite music genres. And I love uh, really deep guttural vocals. So I've been practicing a lot. Like, do you want to hear some? I'm gonna like, let's go. I'm ready to go. Let's get some code. Ow, that boy. Look, I'm going to be a famous one day. What's up? Nifiro, what's going on? Nuno, what up, though? Chris, what up? What up? Good to have you, Hans. What's up? Raj. Okay, Patrick. Uh, I think I said hi to you already, but hello again. What's up from Croatia? Chaos Monster, what's going on? Good to have you. Who else we got in the building? Victor. All right, all right, all right. Sayed, what's going on? Dimitri, Shams, what's up? What's up? Francis, what's going on? All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Alamog, let's see. Freddy, and then we got Dylan. What's up, Dylan? What's going on? Good to have you, Jan. Uh, what, <laughs> what happened to my voice? <laughs> Nothing happened to my voice. <laughs> uh, do I like Gojira? You know what? Gojira, I have I just heard them recently. They're pretty good. The bands that I'm really into right now that's been giving me a lot of uh, life and positive energy. One band called Masterpiece. No, not called Masterpiece. It's called The Anchor. Their song Masterpiece is what has me like super like pumped up because the lead vocalist does the uh, bleh that is just like raw and like gritty and grimy. It's 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 pretty fantastic. Um <laughs> start shouting on the street listen you don't even want me to do it you don't even want me to do it it's RG. what's up joseph in the building <laughs> hey listen 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 oh another band that i'm liking a lot is uh this band called filth and i know i know it's but they have a song called chin check that's pretty good another song called uh stay gutter that's pretty good i'm telling y'all too many things about myself um <laughs> Still, Yana, what's going on? Good to hear you. Hey, FGD, you know what? I want to say something to you. Uh, thank you so much for all the like fantastic community contributions you've been making. A lot of threads that I'll see on, on X, you'll be adding a lot of good value to the conversation, helping people understand from an architectural point of view some good points about Angular. I see you. People see you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. Heavy metal. All right. So many people. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, we have somebody here. Off from Burkina Faso, what's going on, sir? I see you. I see you, Sam. So what's going on? I think I scared people away. I wonder if when I started growling on the mic, did people go away from the stream? <laughs> Listen, I'll say this. If I do form a band, it'd be called a Dazzle of Zebras because that is the name for like a group of zebras, a Dazzle. Oh, this is a good question. Where is Jeremy Elborn? Right there. I'm wait, waiting for Mark to add me to the stream. <laughs> he has the administrator powers. I do. I added you before as an admin to the stream. I don't know why you didn't accept it. But there is Jailborn in the building. Jeremy, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Good. 
Mm-hmm. It's Friday. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Murder of Crows. You got Murder of Crows, a Parliament of Owls, a Tower of Zebras. There's a Bloat of Hippopotamus. Uh, what else is there? There is a, a Skulk of Foxes. Did you know that? There's a Skulk of Foxes. There's a bunch of these that are so, so cool. Oh. <sighs> So, Mark, what are we actually doing today? We we never. I don't know that we agreed on a. Uh, you never agreed to my idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you do your idea. <laughs> All right. As long, I mean, just let you know. You we agreed to my idea. We which do was to build something. This is to let to let you know we do very little preparation for these streams, which is on purpose, friends. There's a reason why we do so little prep because this just has to be like a fun thing for us to do because if it becomes just like highly produced, highly mm-hmm. polished, like. You know what I mean? Like thing, then it becomes less fun, right? Like, and and if I want to keep Jailborn in the building, keep Jeremy on it, like we got to keep it fun, you know, keep it, keep it good. Okay, we could show more stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think there'd be lots of opportunities to show stuff from V seventeen. So, but I'll do it as I'm building upcoming things. Uh Oh. Uh. Signal queries soon. It's in the works. In the works. In the works. Let me share my screen real PRs quick. PRs are moving. Mm-hmm. PRs are moving. Okay, here. Let me uh, share my screen. <laughs> now watch. People are gonna see me in person at some place, and then everybody's going to start like growling at me. <laughs> That's going to become a part of the thing. Like, hey, Mark, what's up? <laughs> you should just introduce yourself that way. Yeah, I should. I should just start doing it. Um, hey, upcoming things. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, wait. So people do want to know about some upcoming things. So before we start coding, uh, let's 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 do some upcoming things. That'd be great. So what are some upcoming things that we can give people a heads up on? So what is a signal query? Uh, so if you watched our last stream, we looked at signal inputs, which is where your component's inputs are signals so that they are, you know, it's this object that contains a value and that lives in the kind of the reactivity space. And so you can create computers over it, you can create effects over it, and it can be used as a mechanism to drive Angular's change detection. Signal-based queries would be a similar idea. if you And if you've read the RFC for signals, then... You will have seen this already, but it's taking Angular's existing APIs for view child, view children, content children, content child, and making it so that the the item that they give you, the uh, the type that they give you, is a signal. So whether you're a singular or a plural query, like we call all these APIs queries, you are getting back a signal. And so if you're using view child as a signal based query, you would just get a signal back. And it will have a the, your query result in it. And you can, again, create computed and effects over that. And if you are using the plural version, like view children, you'll get an array value inside of that signal. But in either case, you'll be able to react to changes to that thing over time. And it will just generally be a simpler experience than the query list that exists for plurals today or the complete lack of wrapper for the singular queries today. Oh, I put my stuff on mute. My uh, little one was asking me a bunch of questions, and I'm just like, that's working right now. I can't answer. <laughs> okay, rad, super rad. Okay, so this is not the syntax, Victor. I like that energy. I like that energy, but uh, that's not the syntax. Uh, yeah, that kind of query. <laughs> not that type of query. Oh, this is a good question. HMR and CSS, what is the to-do list to tackle that? That's in progress. Uh, yeah, so HMR is something that is on our to-do list for this year. It's in our, like, it's it's pretty high on the priority list. So mm-hmm. um, CSS is the kind of the lowest hanging fruit here because it's stateless, so you can just swap out the CSS, no big deal. When we start getting into template and getting into TypeScript, then that is a lot more tricky because it is stateful. Mm-hmm. But wait, we got the one and only Miko Getchev. In the building, Angular Legend, Minko gets you in the building. Yeah. Should we? I mean, Minko, if he wants to like go on my calendar and get the StreamYard link, he can just you just be in here. Minko, if you want to just hang out with us, we can bring you on. Just 
message me and I'll, I'll make make that happen. Okay, can I say Angular Rocks? I can't. Angular Rocks. Yeah. You ever see that YouTube channel where they do the movie trailer parody things? I think they do like trailers for video games that they're mm-hmm. jokes. And then mm-hmm. they have like the announcer read funny things at the end. Yes, 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 yes. I forget what it's called. Honest trailers. Yes, that. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. You're you you've got kind of that energy going on. Today is uh feeling you different like that. All right. All right, all right. Let's uh let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and then we're gonna just start making some code. We're just gonna write some code. Because last time people were asking, uh, who's sleeping on your couch? They want you to introduce that's person. That's that's Mal Malcolm. He's an old know. dog. He's twelve years old. I didn't know that's what Mal was short for. Yeah, Malcolm. Short for Malcolm. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's do this. Let's get this party started. I'm I'm ready to code. I'm ready to add some code. Yes, I know this screen is too small, but I'm gonna fix it now. Okay, and I'll close that. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oh, that's pretty. Amazing. Okay, so here's what we're going to make. There is a game in the U.S. It's probably worldwide, but at least in the U.S. called Jeopardy. And it has it displays questions on the on the screen. Right. So you got like a what is it like five by five screen, like 25 questions or whatever. And then you over time, you could pick a category then you can answer a question. I want us to make the UI for that today and start building up some of the like logic. Yeah. You gonna you gonna use CSS grid? Nope. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll use whatever I gotta use. Even though a table, this is one time a table actually does make sense because it is a table of values that we're gonna display. But a CSS grid is totally fine. But I will not be hung up on CSS today. Okay. So if I can't, you know, if we're like stuck on it, I want to just get some code done because people have commented fairly. You know, can we see more code? Which is fine. This was supposed to be a gaming stream. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, but people, the streets love us. You know, they want they want uh, to see more code. They want to see the Angular team in action. Yeah, I was considering, what if uh, we do one month, like, coding katas? Have you ever seen this? Yes. It's like little code coding challenges. Yes. And stuff like to, that. I used to do them all the time, actually. Just to have fun and challenge myself. All right, I'm going to see if I can still see comments here. Okay, I can still see comments. Like, let's say it says use Tailwind CSS. No, not because I don't <laughs> like it, because I don't know it. No. Oh, my VS Code theme. Thank you for noticing. You know what this theme actually is? It's an accessibility theme. Yeah, I was like about to say, contrast. this looks like a high contrast theme. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell a quick story about why I only use this theme. Now, I used to did not use this theme. When I was uh, teaching at a university, once I was teaching some kids, I uh, had a code and one of the kids was colorblind. And I was saying, hey, if you look at the screen, there's red squiggly lines underneath the error. And I did not have this theme on. And he's like, what squiggly lines? And I'm like, the ones right there. And I, and I was almost getting just kind of like, man, we're like, what? You don't know what I'm talking about? And then one of my teaching assistants said, hey, that kid's colorblind. And I was so embarrassed and I was so disappointed that I didn't think to always share my screen with high contrast. So ever since that day, this was almost 10 years ago. Ever since that day, I've only ever shared high contrast screens whenever I present. It doesn't have to be high contrast dark mode, but I like dark mode and this is a high contrast dark mode. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what do we need to do here? We first need to start the server. So I'm gonna go inside of my apps called Quiz Game. We can do an ng serve. You you get that running. I'm assuming uh, Kevin is behind the scenes here and yeah. can pin questions. If you want to pick some, I, can, I will answer them since I'm not actually doing the active thing today. Sure. Let's do it. Kevin, can you start showing uh, some questions on the screen? Producer Kevin behind the scenes. Yeah, producer Kevin behind the screen. That's right. You tell me if they show up. I can't see Ooh. them on my little tiny Opinion window. about the like ng slash analog files. This is a Brandon Roberts analog project, an open source uh, meta framework for for Angular that Brandon has been driving, and it's very interesting, right? So for for anyone who's not familiar, Brandon, I know you're you're in the chat. Uh, hello, <laughs> we should have you on the stream at some point. Uh, it is a lot of ideas that we are also thinking about 
for kind of long term what the authoring format in Angular might look like. And you know, if you've if you've read the signal based components RFC, you probably are like picking up some of the vibe of what we think Angular components could look like with more iteration over time. And <laughs> I remember, I think even in that RFC, there is a, a sentence somewhere that's like, ah, you know, we're going with this API because it leaves more doors open to us in the future. It's like, it's not just for classes. It could also be used in other contexts. And uh, people maybe uh, had a had an emotional reaction to that, thinking we're going to like start moving away from classes or something like that. It was like, you know, we just want to keep our options open for now. We don't have any concrete plans, but we're certainly thinking about a lot of possibilities and there's a lot of ideas in that kind of analog uh, alternate file format, fan fiction file format, authoring format, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that are very similar to ideas we've talked about on the team. All right. Excellent. Keep asking. You can keep on with the questions. That's excellent, Jeremy. Yeah. Now I see exactly how this is very hard when you're coding to yeah. listen and code and participate. But um, I do like uh, some of the cool things that are exposed. And I'm glad that we are not like to, you know, so that, that we're like thinking about things. So yeah. I feel pretty good about it. Plus, I like Brandon. Brandon, shout out to you. Thank you for you and Chow and the whole analog team. Thanks for just continuing to make uh, Angular awesome. All right, let me tell people what I'm doing real quick. So I'm using the simple browser built into VS Code. So that way we could actually see what I'm making and then have the code on the left-hand side so that way I can share one window. Um, I don't know what the full browser spec is, but yeah. it works. And then I'm just doing... Go Get ahead. some code written, Mark. Come on. <laughs> you said what? So get some code written. I did write some code. I refactored this to make everything in this one file. And then I just made my uh, interface. So okay. we had a question. A question. Yeah, there's, there's a question here. Uh, is it easy to switch from V15 to V17? It should be. It should be really easy. Uh, you just run that ng update command, and it should do most of the work for you. And there's also a, an update, uh, like a there's the change log obviously on GitHub, but, but there's also an update guide at update.angular.io that has instructions for what you need to do to update if there's something that maybe won't be captured by ng update or if there's other stuff you, uh, if, if there, you know, some stuff it needs help with. Oh, I don't have word to wrap on. Can I do something here? Can I make this a little wider? Is that? That's still probably visible. And then I wonder if I can zoom out just a little bit. You're, you're fine. All right. 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 So we got our questions. They're going to be of type question. It's going to be in a question array. So we can do this. And then you do uh, question interface. And then we got a question here. Uh, will bindings to valid touched and other form API still work in zoneless components? How we prevent quantum and signals? This is actually an open question that is on our backlog. So right now we're focused on kind of the core part of signals in the framework itself, such as like signal-based inputs, queries, how will two-way binding work in with signals, right? That's a that's a big question that we are we're actively working on. And there's also the zoneless part of it is like, how do you actually set your app to be zoneless? And what are the mechanics of that? And when you have multiple signal values changing, what is the mechanism by which we schedule a change detection to occur, right? All of these are very foundational to this notion of zoneless and signals. And that's where our focus is right now. And then kind of the next phase of the project will be like, all right, well, now let's go to router and forms and Angular CDK and material and say, how do we now like build on top of this in this kind of user space code? So we're getting there. We don't have the, the whole story figured out just yet. Let's see, I'm currently starting learning Angular. I have a few doubts. Is Angular only a front-end framework or does it support back in like next year? So uh it's complicated <laughs> so angular is primarily a client side framework but we do have support for server side rendering as well and so as of the most recent release you can actually even do um 
ng new dash dash SSR, and that will scaffold you a new project that includes server-side rendering with an express server. Um, we don't have like a whole end-to-end oh, -end solution that includes like a hosting provider out of the box, like something like Next.js does, right? Like, um, you know, Vercel, you know, the company that makes Next.js, right? Part of their, you know, they're doing this is that they they sell the cloud services that go along with that as well. So um, Let's see where we are, is like, we can give you kind of a scaffold you out, like an express server that will do SSR for you. Um, but we don't have the kind of like the, the hosting story there as well. Although you can um, use the ng deploy schematic to kind of get deployments hooked into Angular CLI if you want to set that up additionally. Um, we're looking to continue improving this in the future and, you know, always find ways to eliminate barriers to like reaching your goals and reduce friction. And so we would love to be able to streamline that process even more as we go forward with future releases. Uh, why is Karma still the default? It's been deprecated for a long time now. Uh, we're working on it. <laughs> uh, there is a, a project currently like actively in progress to switch the default to a, a test runner called Web Test Runner. Uh, very appropriately named. And it should be a mostly drop-in replacement for Karma. Uh, but you know, even though Karma is like not really actively developed anymore, it still works. Um, it doesn't really need a ton of active development, but we are like working on switching to something else. So for the most part, people shouldn't have to worry about it. Web test runner um, will be kind of just an automatic switch over for most applications unless you're using some like very specific karma feature which you are a component library do you all use uh so you know obviously we make angular material and angular cdk as part of our first party offerings on angular and inside of google that's what most angular applications are using they're using angular material but we do actually have kind of a different flavor of Angular material that is used inside of Google that's a little more Google branded. Um, so there's kind of like a, a layer on top of it inside of Google that is not open source, uh, but it's still Angular material under the hood. <laughs> let's see, we got, um, let's see, you did not notice a big Build time improvement in 17 uh, plus with ES build. Did you miss something? Uh, possibly. So your application doesn't automatically switch to ES build in V17. That is something that I believe you still have to do manually. So there's a chance if you just upgraded to V17 and didn't do anything else, you're still using the Webpack based build system. So definitely uh, check out the documentation for more on that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, Jeremy, I'm cooking right now. Can you smell the uh, food on the, on, the, on the stove? I'm cooking. So we, we got some stuff going on. I want to make this categories a type, like so I can get some type safety and some consistency there. But for now, I'm just kind of getting some stuff on the on the screen because you were like, yeah, get some code written. You're right. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so... I see a data structure. Yeah. You say what? I see a data structure. I see mm -hmm. some Jeopardy categories. Mm -hmm. how, are we, how are we displaying it? We're going to do it in a second. Let's see. So I, I wouldn't need this if I, yeah, this is going to be optional. Now. I want to remove that, but that's okay for now. Yeah. So um, I'll, answer, I'll answer this question and then we yeah. can try it. It's like, it says, how come there's not a lot of talk about SVG Angular templates at my workplace? One of our main selling points is an interactive graphic that I use D3 for. SVG templates make me want to rewrite. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that we have a lot to say about it. You could use SVG in your templates. They work just like any other HTML element. You can bind things to them. Uh, I think we mention it in our docs that you can use SVG in templates. Maybe we, um, one of the things on my personal to-do list is to actually rewrite the whole uh, template guide. So this is something that is in my like outline that I want to touch on is like, yeah, you can use SVG in here just like anything else. Um, I don't know. What would you want us to say about it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we got this. We're cooking. All right, now let's see. Do we got what we need? Let's say let's say this is the last question before we like we'll we'll focus on Mark's coding for a bit. Um, <laughs> what's the what's next for signal based APIs after signal queries? Ah, I mentioned the uh, the two way binding stuff. So 
we're working on a, an API. I think we talked about this in the RFC called model inputs, which is a way of doing kind of two-way bindings that are baked into the framework and has a much stronger contract around the ownership of data with that two-way binding. And I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, I I got started with AngularJS way back in like 2012. And one of the things I really loved about that was ng model at the time. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I have a, I have a real uh, soft spot in my heart for that old Angular JS ng model, and I feel like the the two way binding story we're looking at now with model inputs uh, captures some of that magic. Man, this is a whole different feel to be able to code, and like not be like entertaining everybody at the same time. Oh, how do you like the the uh, role reversal today, Jeremy? How are you feeling about that? Uh, I mean, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good. It was a good experience, but I'm, I'm just... less I'm less charismatic when inter engaging with the chat. I just yeah. I'm just gonna answer the questions. <laughs> no, it's good. Somebody asked, "Am I gonna use RX NX? What's that? NGRX? I don't even know how to use NGRX." So the answer is no. Not that I don't think it is good. I just so let me explain a little thing about the way that I work and the way that my work, you know, revolves around here at Google. A lot of the things that I do are really for planning and strategizing things like, you know, our DevRel communications, uh, understanding and writing like documents for proposals for features, etc. So I don't really spend a lot of time, you know, looking at other like libraries and stuff. So a lot of times I'm just like, OK, let me make sure that I understand what's going on with the four syntax and then how can we support the engineers how can i gather feedback what you know let me try things you know what i mean so things like that so that's why i don't know how to use it it's not that i don't care it's just that you know i just haven't had a chance to but that's changing in 2024 i'm starting off second stream of the year coding let's go all right jeremy we got our data structure we are looking good all right so the next step that we would probably need to do is now display this in a grid yeah you got to uh, you got to make a grid. <laughs> I don't man, What is like what is this app even going to do, Mark? We haven't even we haven't talked about this. Yeah, I did. It's like Jeopardy. It's going to zoom in. Yeah, it's like Jeopardy. And then you had to do that too, right? So uh, <laughs> Oh. Is it going to keep score? No, 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 is no. Gonna, okay. You going to mark things as answered. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um Okay, 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 okay. I actually got an answer. What we're gonna do? Here's what we're gonna accomplish today. We're gonna get to displaying in the grid, and I'm gonna use the view transitions API to transition to the question on a route. Oh, that's that sounds complicated. Nope, I'm a genius. It's okay. All right, I can do anything. All right, so this section, I'm gonna give it a class called Game Board. There is no CSS for it just yet, but I'm just going to do it so I can start to I'm using almost like an ID, but then I'll be able to like attach to it later, you know, uh, successfully. Look at how pretty or formatted this. You see how nice that is, Jeremy? That is so good. I feel like there should be a space after four before the parentheses. A space after four, but before the parentheses. You mean like yeah. this? Yeah, there should be a space there. That's interesting. All right, I give you that. I mean, that's cool. Uh, so people say, what, what I want to do, I want to make Jeopardy, like the game Jeopardy, where you have a list, a grid of questions or a grid of answers, and then you have to present the question. So let's say for the category of who's who, I would write, uh, here's, oh, and I probably should have the answer here. Okay, that's a good one right there. I'll say that's the value of the question. We probably need the answer, and the answer is going to be a string, or it actually should be called question technically when i'm not making jeopardy because jeopardy is a copyrighted game i'm making a quiz game that displays quizzes in the style of jeopardy okay so we got this and then we'll do a string here okay very cool i'm not going as far as i did when i try to make a game board generator like although if i had succeeded jeremy with that tool this would have been done already i just would have to define the component that represented the square and the, implement the, the functionality I had a vision. All right. All let's right, do, let me keep going. Let's do some more questions. You go for it. What do we, what do we got? <laughs> All right, uh, here's a question. Since the appearance of Signal in the Angular ecosystem, expression change after you can see what's going So, kind of, right? It. Well, I'll put it this way. 
we are trying to move towards a world where you should only ever have to worry about like you know if you're authoring your whole app with signals all of your states and signals and you mutate your signals you should almost never run into an error that is like this where you know this like changed after check thing you like you won't get this exact same error however you could still land yourself in situations where say you <laughs> you take you have a signal and you make an effect over that signal and inside of that effect you change that signal again right and so you kind of create this like infinite loop of changing um the signal right so there are still like coding anti-patterns you could find yourself in and we may add checks to catch those but it should be something that comes up a lot less often in the course of your routine development. All right, what else we got? Uh, why does Angular keep Jasmine as a default isn't deprecated? I don't think so. I don't think Pivotal stopped Jasmine. I'm gonna look this up right now. Do, do, do. Let's go get him. Let's see. Last commit on the Jasmine repo was four months ago. I don't see anything in here about it being deprecated or unsupported. It's still going strong. Um, you can switch to something else if you if you need to. I think like there's I think there should be generally nothing stopping people from using like Mocha. We have experimental support for Jest, and there's also a community uh, Jest integration for Angular CLI. So there's other options. But, you know, this is maybe, I'll, I'll give you my own personal opinion. I don't think the, like, particular testing framework you use really matters that much, right? Like, the important thing is that you have tests and that they're, they're you know, asserting the behaviors that you care about. The difference between something like Jasma or Mocha is, like, it's marginal. They're mostly doing the same thing. Let's see. Uh, here's a question about Matt Button. When are you guys introducing a type input instead of directive? Um, I don't know what this question means, but I can guess. So Matt Button is a component. It's uh, like it is a directive in that in the sense that all components are directives because component extends directive. But Matt Button is a component. Uh, it's not using the like at directive decorator. And that is a very intentional decision because it, you know, the, the intent is to make people use either a native button element or a native anchor element based on whether the element should be performing an action or navigating somewhere. And that's very important for accessibility. And it also, you know, we, we feel like it's generally better when developers can use the native elements and augment them with additional functionality rather than kind of hide them inside of custom components. Is that the, like, is that the question? I don't really know what, uh, what is meant here by like type input. Oh, you know what? I think I know what this means. Um, I think I just wanna like, being able to switch between the variants of buttons, right? So we have like matte icon button and matte like, stroke button, matte outline button, matte raise button, matte fab, all of those are different collectors and you can't change between them dynamically based on a binding. Uh, there's no plans to do that. The, this, this kind of gets into some of the design intent behind material design itself, where in material design, buttons aren't really meant to change kind of which type of button they are dynamically, right? Like you would choose a type of button for that piece of UI based on you know some set of decision criteria, and it's always gonna be that type of button. So it's like just the, the implementation reflects that aspect of material design more than anything else. All right, what else we got? All right, this, this one says kudos to Mark. Uh, it's very hard to do, to dive into the pool and do live coding. <laughs> so. oh it is and it's even harder when you have a six-year-old who keeps coming in asking you questions about things that you can't control at the current moment 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I cannot help you look up how he isn't at school today. And so he's like, oh, let's uh, play Zelda and let's figure out all these moves for Super Smash Brothers. And I'm like, I can't, my child. I'm on stream. <laughs> and you cannot come on stream with me. Yeah. The dog the dog tends not to really uh, <laughs> stream at all. <laughs> Man. You know, uh, that's okay. One day I will uh, never bring him on stream. I say one day I'll bring him on. I'll never bring him on. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Uh, so this question is, how do you work with two-dimensional form arrays? Uh, I don't have a, I, I don't have an answer to this. Like, I, I'm like, my question is like, well, what are you trying to do? But I feel like that's going to very quickly get into more complicated than we can realistically chat over stream comments. And so... Maybe this this is a question for a better for a for a different media type. <laughs> Maybe. Oh yeah. Do you see what I'm cooking, Jeremy? Can you see the vision? That's I what see I'm to ask. two for loops. Yes. Can, well, can you see this the screen? Okay, let me see. I need the uh blue color. Hex code. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. I'm going to bring it all together because it just takes just a little bit of magic. It just takes a little bit of magic to really let people see the vision, right? So we got our answer thing. So here's the hex code for the blue that I want. Um, I could use a CSS variable, which I will at some point. Okay, and then let's see. We said the color. No did background. you look up what the Jeopardy blue was? I did. <laughs> and that's why I want to put it as a, a what do you call that? Um, you know, You know what I'm trying to say. You don't know. I, I want to put them as CSS values, variables, so that way when, you know, I can change them. And and it's not just like a straight up, you know, copy. But okay, so we got that. And then we also need the yellow. Like the Jeopardy yellow. Because I'm just trying to, I like the style, but I'm not trying to copy it one word for word. What's the, what's the, the point value yellow color? I don't know what you're talking about. I you don't? I gotta. I haven't watched Jeopardy in so long. What? I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV much anymore. Um. Jeremy, you know what I'm gonna do, and it's gonna drive the the uh, chat wild. I'm gonna use a table to solve my problem today, because this is a table. Because I have column headers and everything. Yes. So, if you've got if you've got column headers, then yeah, that's that's a table. It is. That's what I'm saying. Um, oh, oh, I know. I know. We in it. All right. uh, I got a question here. Will there be signal forms? Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of have answered this earlier, right? Like right now we're focused on the core framework part of things. And then we're going to be looking at how do signals fit into forms, router, material, CDK. Like that's kind of the next phase of the project. So we'll be getting there. There will be some sort of, you know, signal integration with forms, but we don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. Let's see, is switching from a unit testing tool to another considered easy? Uh, I don't know. I've never done it. Uh, if there were comparable APIs on both sides, you could write a tool that would just switch from one to the other. I, I assume you would run into probably some like timing issues and things like that if the test frameworks are doing different things. But um, I don't know that it's something people often do. <laughs> Let's see. Is that a mono, Jeremy? Let's see. Is it mono? Hmm. Let's see. Is uh is the recommended HTTP client with fetch going for it now? Uh, you know, I don't even know that we have a recommendation. If the fetch based one works for you, I don't know that there's a reason not to use it. The you know before there was fetch for for people who don't know, right? The way you would make requests like this is a an ancient kind of clunky API that was called XML HTTP request. And mm -hmm. fetch is much simpler. So I don't know off the top of my head, but I would probably guess that the fetch based one is a little bit um, smaller in terms of bundle size just because it's simpler, but both are supported right now and you can use whichever one um, works for you, or if you don't care, uh, use <laughs> use either. Um, we should probably put a recommendation out there at some point, right? Like, why have why should, do we have both of these things? Oh. Let's see, we got another question here. 
hey, how would you approach implementing a real-time data update feature in Angular, such as displaying live notifications or updating dashboard in response to server-side changes? Ah, yeah, so this is actually something Angular is really good at because in, you know, say, current Angular with zone-based change detection, you, as long as you change your state inside of your application and your, you know, those updates are happening within the zone, then your UI will just update. So if you wanted to use, say, WebSockets and create a persistent connection to your server, such that the server can send new data down and you update that state inside of your client code, it will just update, right? Your UI will just update and you won't have to do anything. Uh, you could also use, there's a technology called server sent events that is a web standard that is actually really underused, um, but works really well if your server supports it. This is actually one of my, when I very first started at Google many, like over a decade ago, one of my very first projects was to add some like real time updates to a UI with server sent events. And as long as that server sent event handler in your client is running inside of the zone, which I'm not sure if it does by default, but if it's not, mm. then we just do ngzone.run inside of your handler and you update your data, it will just work. And then it gets even simpler in the future in a signal-based world where whether you're using service and events, whether you're using web sockets, um, however you're getting that data, as long as your data is on the client stored inside of signals, you update those signals and your UI will update. Hmm. All right. Uh, question here. Um, if the TC39 decorators proposal lands, will it be possible to write Angular code in plain JavaScript? Uh, I will say that probably regardless of what happens with any iterations on decorators or any other web standards, we probably will be required, we probably always require TypeScript for Angular. And part of that is that we use TypeScript for Angular's own template compiler, right? So when you are um, writing your HTML template, that HTML template never gets served anywhere, right? There is no HTML file that gets like bundled into your JavaScript or, or served from your server. Angular at compile time with this AOT compilation turns your template into a bunch of JavaScript instructions. And we use a plugin to the TypeScript compiler to do that. And then on top of that, for things like components, directives, pipes, we actually also kind of piggyback off the TypeScript compiler to extract all of the component metadata and other you know, directive metadata for like selector and inputs and outputs. And we capture all of that in the output DTS file for your component. And so we very, very like strongly rely on the TypeScript tool chain in order for Angular to work. So there, there's not really a, a sensible way for us to make all of that work with plain JavaScript. Oh, that's what that is. Why is it doing it? I do not like that. I do not like this, Jeremy. This, this is actually a great question here. Um, so this says, so signals eradicate the use of change detections, right? Mm -hmm. No, actually. So what happens is um, in Angular's current system, there's kind of two parts to change detection, right? There is when do you do a change detection? And then what happens when change detection runs? And in the Angular of today, zone.js is what drives when does change detection happen? So anytime there's an event, anytime there's a uh, network request resolving anytime there's a set timeout running or a promise stop resolve running zone is aware of that and says ah something has happened i need to run a change detection and the problem with this is that those things happen a lot especially during app initialization and you can end up running way more change detections than your app really needs to right so it can slow down your performance and it can make your app hard to debug and hard to reason about because there's just so many change detection happenings and that's really hard to figure out the timing of all of them. And so with signals, especially if you were to just like take zones out, make your components on push and start using signals, like that would work. That's a that's a solution for, for uh, zoneless. What is happening is when you write in those signal values, it's scheduling a change detection. But here's the, here's the catch. Um, 
in in that world, right, we want we would want all of the components in the application to be on push, and so that when that change detection runs, it's more limited in terms of what gets checked. And then going even further, um, when we get to a point where we have signal based components, which is again, if you check out the RFC for Angular signals, there's kind of this API in the component that says signals true. If you get to the point in the future where a whole application is signal based components then we can do um, kind of what we're calling per view change detection. So when a signal changes, we are able to know exactly which views in your application, where views is kind of either components or embedded views from engineering, now. and know just to check those for changes. Okay, so. Now, this, there is, you know, you might be wondering when I say this, why, like you have the individual expressions in your template and you know which signals they're reading, couldn't you only check this specific expressions oh, that, no, were, fine. that were affected when a signal changes. And the answer to that is like, yes, you could do it that way, but tracking the expressions with that level of granularity actually has a lot of overhead and could be more expensive than just dirty checking the whole view all at the same time. So there, there is a trade-off that happens there. Jeremy. I'm Mark. thinking about something and I'm thinking about is there I don't want to over optimize, but I need to get this displayed in a column first before we go to a uh, like I want to do one row. I guess I could do this. I'm trying to think about how to get that like vertical row where mm -hmm. each thing. Yeah, I mean, you probably just want to format your data such that you have, you know, your categories that you lift all out and then you have all of your. Like basically, you're just listing out, you know, 100, 100, 100, 100. Hold on. The other host is me, Jess, and I do know my microphone is on. It's so that I can come in at any time, anywhere, and be ready. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Back to your back to your point, Jeremy. Yeah. So I have I have my stuff running already, and now I'm gonna like fix this up. All right. All right. All right. So I'm trying to think. So yeah, so what I was trying to say was like the first, like I know how to do it where I can do a TR. But if I do a TR here, it's going to be like a row across. And I don't want to pull the first question from each category to fill in each TD for this row, if that makes sense. That feels like not the right strategy to, to display it that way. But I guess I could, oh, you know what I could do? I think, uh, let's see, Mark, would you feel more comfortable if you extract HTML? I think looking at all the things at the same time is making the brain struggle a little. I will never feel more comfortable doing anything. That's the first problem. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, maybe. It's okay, so I usually start here, and then, Gabriel, like, if this gets too, like, too wonky, you know what I mean, where it's too many lines, I will extract it. But for now, we haven't even gotten there yet. I always do separate files. I, I just like separate files. I know you do. I, you know, but when we do separate files, people complain that Angular has too many files. If we do it in the same file, yeah, there's too many yeah. things. I like. I I understand the ecosystem has moved on, and you know, JSX has been very influential here, and people yeah. are now accustomed to their templating and their code living side by side. But yeah. I like it the other way. <laughs> so tell me how bad this is. Um, how bad is this? So I want to do, so I got a table row and then I would do. If you put a, if you put a div inside your, your table, that's invalid. I, I want to move that out. No, that was, that, that was from before I switched to the table. So I already removed my ULs and stuff. And then I'm going to take this and move this to another element. I don't know what element this is yet, but I do want to, I will do something. Hold on. That was like a fragment in React. Hold on. <laughs> Stop peer pressuring me. Everybody's peer pressuring me to move to a separate file. That's it. Only have the chat over here. Yeah, they're all peer pressuring me. I could use grid or flexbox, but it's not the it's not the dream that I have. That's not my dream. <laughs> See? All right. Let me let me take a closer look at what you got going Hold on. on. Here. So you got I don't know why it's doing a, the one liner there. I do not like that. I do not like that. This thing is like forcing me to do. So, 
so See, here, it's like reformatting. Here's like here's that. some stuff you should do. So first thing first, um, you should put oh. your um, got all your headers there. Your ths need to be in a tr. Oh, okay, I can fix that easily. No yeah. problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, we'll get that. Um, you can put them in a T head as well. Like put that TR in a T head, but it's not strictly necessary. No, we're all good. I'm gonna do the right thing, brother. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. And then I put them all right there. Okay, so we got our first row. Why don't you like this? Why um, don't you like this? You got a table TR yeah. TH. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, is your where's your end brace for the four? Oh, your end brace for the four is in the wrong place. Yeah, because it's getting all like messed up. So hold on, let me slow down for a sec. Because I'm making so many changes at the same time. Let me slow down. Put the put the embrace after your uh, th, not the tr. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So we got that part locked and loaded. All right. Why don't you like my category anymore? Because because now category doesn't exist there. Right. So you, gotta, you need a second loop for your uh, Which is, for your tds. It needs to be around your tds. Yeah, that's what I have. Hold on, one second. I had I had all of this working for a second, and then it got. And then I started like refactoring to make it into a table and this messing me up. Hold on, give me a second. I think they're they're trolling you in the chat. They said, what IDE are you using, Mike? <laughs> oh man, this feels feels bad. <laughs> Why not use currency pipe? Because I'm not, that's not real money. It's just for display. It's just a points value. Good question though. Yeah. He said, Why not use currency pipe? That's a good question, but but we don't need to do that for this. Um, okay, so let's, let's let me get my so I have that already working. That's what I want, and then I need to. I want this to still be in the scope of. That's why I had the tr where I had it. Okay, now I remember why I did this, right? Because I want the scope of my category. My category has a sub object called a question, so yeah. that's why I had the the bracket down some. So that way I could have my for loop within the same yeah. scope. You see, I think you just want two for loops, right? Because trying to, because you're going to have to, yeah. like, I don't know that you can make the HTML structure way work the way it needs to with one for loop, right? Because you can't, like, no, I don't want to do that. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it work with one for loop. Hold on. Hold on one second, Jeremy. That's, that's, that's not what I was saying. <laughs> Hold on. Look it. I'm going to move everything that I have out of my for loops. I already had all of this other stuff working. You see? So I had this already. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it already shows. I was trying to format it. Uh, is this a mock interview? <laughs> yes, it's a mock interview. I, I'm I'm hoping to get into Google one day. Um, yeah. Yeah. I fun anecdote. I did a mock interview for Minko back when he was first uh, uh, looking at interviewing at Google many years ago. And he did better in that mock interview than any real candidate I ever interviewed. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So I had I had what I had, and now, now prettier is making me upset because now it's like, you know, look at all that. Boy, you got what are the double? Oh, I see. Yeah, this prettier messing me up. Uh, prettier is just like okay. Hold on for a second, Jeremy. I got to do something because okay, format on save. No, do not format on save. Just don't. We'll... Yeah, I actually don't like format on save. I also don't show lint in my IDE when I'm coding because it infuriates me when I like introduce a variable and it immediately pops up like, hey, unused variable. I'm mm -hmm. like, I know, I just wrote it. I just wrote it, okay. You can tell me the lint errors when I'm done before I'm gonna send a PR, but that I don't wanna hear correct. about them while I'm coding. That is correct, that is correct. So now all my stuff will come back to what I want. Somebody said it's just a mock interview. It seems like it. I ain't gonna lie to you. It seems like it. But um, all right. So now I'm not worried about. So you see, everything is displayed the way that I want it to be displayed. So I was trying to get a table to do what I wanted, but it sounds like a table is going to give me more uh, trouble than I want it to be. Is text in my real name? Yes. <laughs> Uh, not a not a nom the internet. Yeah, yeah. Nom the web. Oh, the yeah, dogs yeah. are coming over. All right, some pets now. Let's pivot away from using a table because the table is really giving me a, a hassle right now, and I don't like it. So I'm getting my table out of here. So I was you, working on this table. You can use the table. You just need a separate for loop for your ths and for your tds. Are uh, okay. 
So here's what I want. Let me let me let me do it the way that I'm thinking of doing it. Okay. And then like in in without it being dynamic, and then convert this to a dynamic option, right? So that way I can see it because I think so. I want Q1 here, all from the same category, right? And Q2 all same category. Not like oh oh no, 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 that wouldn't be right. You see? This would be cat one. Yeah. Uh Q1. That's what I want. And then next to it should be cat two, Q2. Yeah. Patrick here mentions Vim in the chat. I used to use Vim back when I, I had my very first coding job as a student research assistant in college. I the whole lab used Vim. And so I I learned how to use it and I was that was my regular thing. And then later on in life, once I started using Visual Studio, I never went back. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to use Emacs when I was in graduate school. No, and, I've never uh, used Emacs, but that has never come across my path. So. It's good. So Emacs, I, Emacs is like a super editor. You know what I mean? Like that thing is super. Okay, yeah. so I got my categories at the top. I'm going to come back to my code because I got to get the HTML structure right because I'm spending way too much time fighting with trying to guess. I don't want to guess. So yeah. let's treat it like a mock interview. Here's what I would do in a mock interview. If everything is getting like messy where I don't know exactly what's happening, I would do this. I would literally go and create what I'm trying to create and then I would fix it. All right, so does this look almost right? Okay, cat, okay, Q1, yeah. Q2, why is that not right? That's a table. Yeah, that all looks right. So what I think what you're you're getting thrown off by maybe is the CSS, is uh -uh. add a, go add some CSS real quick um, for uh, add a border to your TH and TD and add a padding and add a, um, add on the table, add border collapse. Okay, hold on. Before we do anything, before we do anything, before we do anything, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. All right, so then we'll do our border. I already have the styles that I want for this. Hold on, check this out. I already got that covered. I got it covered, baby. Let's do that. Bam, bop, 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 bop. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so I have one, one too many categories. So let me just take that off for a second. Okay, cool. So that's what I want. And then I want another row. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it should be, these will all be Q2s. You see what I'm saying? Oops. Hold on. Um, that these will all be Q2s. This is the dream of my life. This is this is what my heart, you know, could fill in. I can't believe Jess called me the other host when we just met. We were hanging out all week at a conference together. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mark, there are never too many cats. That's also true. Oh, so I was reading this. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. There's never too many cats. All right. So now, 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 now. This yeah. represents what I'm trying to create. See, it'd be category one, Q1, and Q2. Category two, Q1, and Q2. You see all the way down. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I want. Yeah. All right. Hold on. The, the dog is whining to go out in the backyard. So let me step away for a second and let him out and... And you, you get some for loops in there. I already got my for loops. I can't get for loops. I already have my for loops working. You see what I'm saying? All right. All right, so let me keep coding, friends. I'm going to code and kind of watch the chat and then uh, see what's happening. Okay, so now that I got my soul, as I was trying to do this thing. So like I was explaining, well, the way I do things, friends, is if I get a little like jumbled up with something like this, I would do what I'm doing here. So now that I can see what, I'm, what I want, I can start replacing it with dynamic code now that I got like the structure together. Because if we look at these TDs, if I put these in a class equals, uh, I think it's answer. So then you see, so they already look like Jeopardy questions. Yeah. Use, use the cascade mark though. What cascade are you talking about? You don't you don't have to put a class on every TD. Just put a put a make a make your rule declaration affect all the TDs under the uh, the table. You know what's funny about that? I did that before in, in another app, and then you reviewed the code and said it was brittle. You told me not it, to do that. It's situational, right? Yeah, you told me not to do that. You do you remember that? It's you situation. reviewed my code. Also, my um, philosophy changes all the time. That's so. true. Hold on one second. Um, oh. 
We I, all need help in life, Rafael. Uh, then solo learn is not free. Uh, the course is free for solo learn if you want to learn Angular. Uh, it's very similar to the course that we have here on our YouTube channel. And then you can also go to the Angular course on solo learn and you can learn that for free. Okay. I just wanted to put that stuff out there. All right. You it's it's funny, Jeremy. Like it's fine. I don't take offense to that. It's just funny that when I had that uh in some code before, you're like, Yeah, this is super brutal. So I stopped doing it because I trust you. It's situ it's situational. There's some there's times where you're using the cascade yeah. makes sense and times where it doesn't, right? Where like if you have like an arbitrary structure of this just like div span yeah. paragraph div, right? Don't don't write your CSS like div span paragraph div. Right? Oh, good, like, point. good point, good point, good great point. Great classes for that. But when you've got a table, right? Like, yeah. yeah, put a CSS class on that table and, and then, then use the cascade for the, yeah. the rows and cells under it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I got it. Okay, so I'm gonna refactor this. I'm gonna refactor it. I'm just trying to make it work. So you make it work, make it right. Then you make it fast. So we're gonna make it work. So first, let's replace these headers with dynamic. Mm, 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 mm. So I got my for loop that I already wrote. I saw some conversation in the chat about ng deep, uh, and yes, there was there was a previous stream where you know I think that marking ng deep as deprecated, it, like it was a mistake insofar as it's it's not really viable to remove it. <laughs> so I think we should probably undeprecate ng deep. It's still discouraged, right? So if you um, if you go to angular.dev and you go to the components guide, which I'll even, um, I should put a, a link in the chat, but I'm on a different computer, but I'll, I'll write it out. Uh, angular.dev slash guide slash components. Um, go to there, and I think the, uh, I have a, there's a section I wrote here on styling where I talk about ng deep and I, I want to like still strongly convey that usage of ng-deep is discouraged, right? It's typically something you want to avoid, but deprecated means that like we plan on removing this API and I don't think we have a realistic path to removing this API. So we should probably undeprecate it. Jeremy, I was misunderstanding what you were saying. I understand you better now. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I knew I liked you. I knew I liked you. And thank you. Somebody said that I was right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I am trying to make it work. Okay. When you said two for loops, I kept saying I already have two for loops. You weren't saying that one of them would be nested. I still have to repeat one of these for loops. Yeah. Get what I wanted. I did not know what you were saying because I already had two for loops. For loops. Yeah, that's what I said. I already had two for loops. I'm like, why do you keep saying that? There are two for loops on the screen. <laughs> yeah. See, the software engineering is mostly about communication. Yeah. Not about like, coding. Literally, I just couldn't understand why you kept saying two for loops when there were already two for loops. And I'm like, what is he talking about? But I have to repeat this category. So um, one of the natural inclinations, friends, as engineers is to always, you know, if you see you wrote something, you could first you are like, no, I can't repeat that code. I have to find a way to reuse this thing because I already wrote it. In this case, I don't think I can avoid it. Now, if one of you are like a super clever goose and you're like, oh, I know how to do it. Tell us. I'd love to see how do you avoid repeating this loop here just so I can get access to that category because that's what I need next. Now we're cooking with, man, now we're cooking. Now we're back. We're back in the building. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark and I'm back in the building. Okay. All right, so I got my, so then I won't use this out of when I'm just trying to expose our category variable. Then I go to my question. All right, so let's see if I just save that. What's that gonna give me? But that's two, if they're all 200, it won't let me know. So this one will be 300. So if I get that, oh, that's still the wrong way. That's like horizontal, but we'll fix it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this would be 300. All right. Um... Let's see. There's a question here. What would you recommend for learning better soft skills? So this is I'm gonna I'm gonna just like tangent on this question. Go for it. I don't like calling them soft skills, mm. right? Mm. Um, Talk about there's it. there's kind of this like 
built in bias to the term soft skills and that they're like, oh, well then there are hard skills and right. And like engineering and math and physics, those are the hard skills. And those are the ones worthy of respect and soft skills are like, oh, well, like that's just filler, right? Like those are like perks you can have on your resume. And I'm here to tell you, no, <laughs> nope, 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 no. Nope, nope. uh, in software engineering, the most important thing uh, for being able to, you know, build large things and maintain them over time and have sustainable projects is communication. That is more important than anything else. Uh, you can know all the fancy coding tricks you would like, but if you can communicate with your team and with your stakeholders and your customers and your partners, then you are not going to have a successful product. And writing as well, right? Absolutely critical skill for software engineering is being able to document the behavior of systems and the desired behavior of systems and uh, specify uh, <laughs> requirements, right? Like these things are, are critical skills in any engineer's toolkit. So given that, like going back to the, the oh, question. Oh, of like, oh, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm unmuted. I didn't mean to be unmuted. Oh, keep talking, Jerry. Like, are there any recommendations for like getting better at things that people traditionally refer to as soft skills, which I think is like communication and writing and what else? Like, are there any other areas that, um, that would be considered like soft skills here? Sure. Here's another thing that I think is incredibly valuable. If you're talking about like communication skills and collaboration skills is the ability to surface other people's ideas and, and make sure people are able to be heard and seen as contributors in a conversation, for example. That's something that people underestimate, especially as like a lead. So somebody just doesn't communicate as like a, so I'm a very like direct communicator, so I have no problem being heard. But what if somebody doesn't communicate the same way that I do? As a leader, how do you make sure you get their, their ideas surfaced and, and validated amongst the group? I think that's a skill that people don't talk about. So, so let's talk about writing first, right? Like I think writing is a really undervalued skill for software engineers mm -hmm. and developers. So my first, first stop on this journey is Google actually has a tech writing, a uh, little like mini course that you can take on developers.google.com. Google, if you just do a Google search for Google tech writing course, uh, that will come right up. Um, I've done this like years ago and it's really good. Um, it's not enough to just take the class though. And then kind of like, remember two or three things. Like you really have to practice the things that it's talking about. And it's really easy to look at that and be like, oh, like passive voice, like present tense, like eh, this is all just like grammar stuff and it's not very important. And like, it actually is right. Like when you are able to really internalize these best practices and exercise them in your writing, the quality of your writing will improve and your things will be easier to understand and people will like respond to it kind of on a subconscious level. So it is important. So pr the second aspect of this is practice, right? Like you can't get good at anything without doing that thing. Um, or, you know, I, I say to myself a lot when I'm screwing up all my woodworking projects is the only way to get good at something is to be bad at it for a long time. It. Yep. Yep. You gotta be bad at it for a long time. Yep. Yep. So, well, for some time, you don't have to be a long time, but for some time. So, yeah. So for like, for writing, like, write a lot, write, write documentation, write, you know, product specifications or I don't know, whatever, whatever it is in your job or in your hobbies or that you're doing, like just, find opportunities to write. Um, and as for communication, that one, I don't, I, that one's challenging, right? Like it's hard to improve your communication skills. One thing that I think is a really good tool for this that, you know, has kind of a high bar for getting into is improv. If you are able and, you know, uh, have the, you know, the resources, the time and the energy to, do some improv classes, that's really valuable, right? You kind of learn to listen in a way that most people don't always listen, right? I guess actually that's maybe the, the first thing is like the most important thing about communication is listening. <laughs> and this is something you really have to learn if you want to do improv because you can't just be up there and like in your head thinking like, this is the next thing I'm going to say because you have no idea what the person up there with you is going to say. And so you have to be 
actively attuned to the other people who are kind of up doing a scene with you and be able to respond to that. And it's a good way to kind of practice that skill and build up those brain neural pathways. There are also books out there, right? There are things about emotional intelligence, like there's books like Radical Candor and whatever else. I, I actually haven't read any of these really, but <laughs> um, they, I think they're like relatively popular. Um, practice empathy. I don't know. I'm not the best person to give advice here, maybe because I, I don't know what resources to recommend. So I can give you some books that'll help you just be like a good communicator, good leader, and just uh, some things that I've read that have made a really big impact. There's Radical Candor. Another book that is really invaluable is 360 Degree Leadership because it teaches you how to like lead laterally, lead you know your leaders, lead people who report to you, and even how to lead your peers. But it's really about effective you know, like uh, co coordination and stuff. But Radical Candor is uh, pretty good. Uh, a good book is Thanks for the Feedback. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, let's see. Radical Candor is great. All right. Uh, let's see. There are a bunch of questions. I did this. Thank you for that feedback. I am watching your comments about how to do this. Um, and then I saw something that made me feel a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> Ladislav says, Mark, I'm writing a code with you and I can't go any further because we're on the same page together because here's where... Oh, yeah. It's kind of tricky. There's some like for loop magic I need to do here that I don't know if a for loop is the right tool to do. Oh, yeah. The the chat is pointing out that we should plug our engineering director's book, <laughs> Sarah Drasner's Engineering Management for the Rest Every, of the Yeah, sure. I I haven't read it. I probably should. <laughs> you should read it. Um I have the book and uh yeah, I bought it even before. Uh, it's great, 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 great. Yeah. I should and, just buy one and get like Sarah to autograph it for me the next time I see her. Peter. Um, yes, I think this is right. I think we do switch to flex. But before we even switch to flex, one of the things I said I did not want to do in the beginning was get too bogged down with uh, these questions. So what I'm thinking about doing is going on to the, the view transition part, because I really want to make that work. I really want to make that work before we call it a day. Um, all that growling has made my voice super light deep. So I need to do that more like no, they grow legs, make it it. I mean, you've got a you've got a possible like side hustle here where you could do coding ASMR videos. Yeah, so <laughs> when you uh, want to do things. Okay. So let me just tell you. So this is super fun. Let me let me tell you, friends, some other things that I've been thinking about. I thought about a I thought about also nesting some table rows with all of like creating all the table rows I need for a column and nesting it inside of a table row. But then I was like, okay, do I create invalid HTML? And then am I gonna create something that's not accessible? Because no matter what, like we should try to create accessible like code. Okay, um, somebody said something else. Uh, let's see, okay, I'm lost already. It's okay, uh, why is all the code? Why is all the code in app.component? Cause we're just having some fun. This isn't not, this is not a production application friend. Uh, we're just making some some like examples, and then once we figure it all out, I will separate it, right? Like this card thing, you know, that shows the uh, this thing. This could easily be its own component. Once we figure out how to make it work, then you refactor. That is the way that I work, um, unless you know something that's like brand new. I just want to make it work. But good question, good good question. Uh, see, I'm happy because I would never be sensing on changes. CSS grid just better table. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree that a grid is better, um, but except for in this case, we had a clear data structure that matched the table. And so that's why we were trying to get this like that. But Jeopardy style grid is actually a little bit less uh, trivial than I thought it was. I, th I thought it was more trivial actually. All right, I've been talking a lot. Let me get back to some coding while we still have a little bit of time left. Um, yeah. All right, Jeremy, any any notes on my uh, magic, my, my majestic grid here? Hold on, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, is that the is that a, a Jeopardy adjacent font? <laughs> yeah, this is just, a, <laughs> that's default font, right? Like I just put monospace as the font for all of this. That way, you know, we're not in any, uh, any scary times. All right. So what's the what's the app gonna do? We got we got like fifteen minutes left. Yeah, we, we're gonna make it work. I'm just gonna add a click handler to this thing or something, right? And on click or I guess I can make it a link. That could actually will work too, so I can route to the next page. So our one of our engineers, Andrew Scott, wrote a really nice blog about the 
view transitions API. Yes, currently uh, experimental support Exper well, because I'll... view transitions themselves are uh, very new and kind of still evolving. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get started with that. So I'm going to go over to my app config, app config.ts, and then we're going to update our router to support this. So here's what you do in your providers list. You're going to just add another thing to it. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add two things. I'm going to add uh, with... Let's see, is it here with animations? Is that what it's called? With view, okay. With view transitions, I want to add this. And then I also want to add with component input binding because that is just such a super nice feature and I just love it. Come on, get up in there. Why are you mad? Why are you, why are you mad? Oh, did I skip something? Oh, um, this should be my, this should be inside my, this should be parameters here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. It should be parameters. Okay. Super dope. Um, do we need to provide animation for this? We'll see. We'll see. I'm not worried about the animation right now, but I do want to be able to click on a quite I want to click here on the number and I want to go to a page that shows the question. So we can answer it, right? That's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, it's very good to hear that switching to the new four syntax had a noticeable performance improvement. It's good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. New syntax. Okay, Does let's get this. Even here, like seeing Mark use it, I'm like, yeah. That's what? So, it's so much better. Oh, this uh, this thing. So over over ng4. Nggc. I want a component. I want it to be called uh, answer, and then I want it to be inline. Uh, there used to, there's a way to do all that where it's like inline, but I don't have time to be playing around. Do I know what is it? I think it's like inline. Inline template, and then inline styles. Yeah, so it is a no inline, it was an inline style. Okay, that is how you do it. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I don't know how people are how much people are aware of this, but you can now do a singular style URL and style in your component decorator instead of it always being plural. It's a nice tiny little quality of life improvement. Mm -hmm. I'm using it. I'm actually using it in our application. Uh, my think, style are just styles. Yeah, I see. You got styles, but it's one string, right? Like you, right. Could, you could change that to style, I think, or it was, it's now no, it's it's styles. No styles yeah. there, but it takes a string instead of an array. It takes a string instead of an array, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, Jeremy, answer some more questions. All right, I'll answer some more questions. I heard a child yelling <laughs> in Mark's background. All right, uh, question here. Any way of writing tests in the front end which can check the health of an app? I got asked this by a director. Uh, I mean, that there's a lot of things that kind of do static analysis and give you insights into the health of your application. Lint checks are something like this, right? Where Lint is catching things that are probably things you don't want to do, but aren't exactly compiler errors. There's tools like Lighthouse, where you can get insights into your kind of performance and accessibility of an application. Although that, like, in order to run that as part of a test, you would need to actually like boot up your application, and it's more of a an integration or end-to-end -end style test that would be doing that. Angular has its own template diagnostics that give you kind of some tips, but those come up at compile time. Um, there's probably third party tools out there that people sell that will claim to tell you things about your code health. I don't have any experience with anything like that. Um, yeah. Like I think the, like the lint is really the, the most foundational thing here. Um, there are to-do analyzers, right? Um, though, although I, I would maybe take the controversial opinion that to-dos are not a sign of uh, like unhealth in code, right? A to-do is just a helpful note from a previous implementer and not necessarily something that represents technical debt. I'm trying to think what else, like health of an app. 
Health of an app? Mm. Yeah, to do. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Jared's a really good one. It's like, what do you mean by health? Right? Like, how? Like, there. Oh, you know, there are code complexity. Okay, here I have a couple of ideas. There, there are tools out there that will a analyze the like cyclomatic complexity of code, right? And that can tell you like code is maybe more complex than mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, you intend it to mm -hmm. be. Um, and then there is another thing out there called mutation testing. This is interesting because what it will do is like run on a like some sort of recurring basis and take your code and like randomly mutate it, right? It will like invert a condition or delete a line or something like that, or like rearrange function calls and then run your tests. And if your tests still pass, then that's a sign that something is under tested, right? And that your test should be covering more, right? Code coverage, just like per line coverage is really a like very weakly useful metric because it can tell you what in your code is definitely not covered, but it doesn't give you any kind of information about what is covered. Because just because some code ran in your tests doesn't mean that your tests are actually covering the behavior of that code. Mutation tests are you know, a pretty good way of like surfacing issues that your tests aren't covering, but they are not very mainstream, right? Mutation observer tests, or no, sorry, not mutation observer, mutation tests, are uh, kind of like a, a niche thing. And I don't know if there's like any super popular libraries for, for doing them in open source. Um, what else we got? Oh, there's a question. Uh, what is cyclomatic complexity? Or like, do we all know what cyclomatic complexity is? I'm just gonna read the definition so I don't get it wrong. Let's see. Uh, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, There's a, I'm just going to go to Wikipedia. Cyclomatic complexity is a software metric used to indicate the complexity of a program. It is a quantitative measure of the number of linearly independent paths through a program source code oh, oh. developed by Thomas J. McCabe Sr. in 1976. So it's generally looking at like, based on my kind of following this Wikipedia article, like how many distinct paths through your code exist. And the more complex that gets, um, the the more kind of like you can use that as a an indicator of like how complex is this code and how hard hard to maintain is this code. Jeremy, I was stuck right, and I'm like, man, I like broke this, and I don't know what was going on, and I'm like, I added my route, and it was just stuck, and I'm like, man, why did all my labels disappear? And I was like, what did I do? Jeopardy blue is the same color as visited link blue. Ah, uh, that's pretty good to know. Yeah, Peter, You're I literally? figured that. I figured that out. Uh, it's the color. It's the A color. Yeah, I figured it out after I was just clicking, like kind of frustrated. Just like, man, what did I do? You know, it's already hard to code when you're like, like, like live code. You can't always like think as clear as you want. Is it literally the same like hex code value though? I think it is. I mean, I can't see it on my screen, but. I think it might be. Um, I, I think wonder if there's a relationship it. there. I wonder, if, I wonder if, like, there's a early days of the web. Big Jeopardy fan. Why don't you like this? You you, you don't like that? If I just do this, okay, that's close enough. But if it gets visited, um, okay, that's fine for now. That's fine for now. Fine for now. Right. So now we can click, and then uh, I can I can display my answer. Yeah. Which is fine. Which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. I wonder yeah. sometimes, like, I wonder how all of these, like, original colors and everything, like, all these default styles for the browser, what's the story behind them? Like, why it, why are unvisited links that particular blue and mm -hmm. why are visited links that particular purple? Man, um, tell me about it. And it then I have a, um, a really upset child in the background that is just, like, destroying my focus mm -hmm. more on top of, um, you know, on top of everything that's happening. It's just like, okay. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, Wait, the, uh, Peter says I had the same moment as you. I know, I know. So, what was first, the link color or the Jeopardy blue color? That is a good question. 
Yeah, go find out. That's your homework for for next stream. Yeah. Is go find out if the the link color for HTML anchors was like inspired okay, by Jeopardy. Yes. Who came first? All right, so <laughs> we got this working. Last thing I want to do for this because we're going to be like super out of time, and I think that you answering questions today has been like really amazing because you bring so much of the context that people are like really like thirsty for to be honest with you they really want this like context from you so we're probably going to end with a little bit more of your like feedback but um i'm going to just get this working and then i'm going to continue this like you know so if you liked me coding today and you enjoyed this i will do more I would do more coding. And I just think that it's fun to get into more coding. Jeremy also likes to use this time for coding sometimes. Uh, I mean, I want to use this time for playing a game. And you're 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 always being the responsible one. I'm making a game as we code, right? Uh, um, you know, here's here's something we could do on stream. Uh it's not Angular related, but what if we just like learned Rust while we were streaming? I would do that. I would, do that. I would do that. I don't need to. It's not related to my my job. All right, let me get in here and do this thing. Fun. They asked for stuff, Jeremy. We got to deliver. Um, this oh, that's the interface. I think I need my answer component. Look, my answer component. Let's just do some fun stuff. So they want it. They want new stuff. Is uh input? Oh, sorry, yeah, is signal input from the <sighs> Angular core. Right. So I think our text can be a signal. I mean, can be an input. Right, and it's going to be of what type string? Well, I can give it a default or not. Def it's not the right word. It's default value. What's the right language for that? That's the default value. Yeah. Oh, default value. Okay. I felt like Paul. I wrote something. Initial, about initial value. Initial value. Yeah, that's the right language. It's initial value. Initial right. Value. Yeah. Um. Okay. So then I got my initial value <laughs> because I want to pass in from the router. From the routes, I want to pass in the question text yeah. or the answer text. So I can put like text here. Oh, no, it has to be the same name. Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Uh, do Googlers love Angular? It's, uh, I mean, some do, some don't. <laughs> People on the Angular team like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've uh, got, we've got some like very enthusiastic Googlers who are you know in our angular community i'm sure i'm sure there are some people at google who would prefer to be using something else people have their own preferences Heck yeah and then last thing i'm gonna pass in here it's gonna be my uh what do you call that thing my my question dot i think i put like description or something something like that and then if we go in here i can just instead of saying answer works i can just do text now this is the beauty of I had somebody comment something really not aggressive, but they had a really strong opinion about Angular routing. And I asked them what was the problem with Angular routing. Like they said it was so complicated. And I'm like, what I just did right now with a few key, like strokes is gonna be like amazing, right? Oh, 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 nope. I know, don't tell me. Nobody tell me, nobody yell. It's a yeah. signal. So you gotta yeah. look at that. But what's but, but look, you don't even see what's happening, do you? Do you see what's happening? Does anybody see it? I mean, I see the text changing. But do you see how it's changing? Uh, it's I see. An, there's an animation there. There's, there's an thing. animation there, baby. There's an animation. Now, look how I did that with so little. I spent more time on the table than this fancy animation. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Oh, OK. Wait, hold on. Now, now Jeremy, play. Play. Oh, I'll okay. play. Uh, give me who's who for. 200. All right, All right, he is the Angular Uber TL. Who is Gary Busey. Gary Busey, Ant. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the problem is who's who for 300 is actually next to it. It's, see, now here's the next question. This producer keeps the stream going smoothly. Oh, well, uh, who is producer Kevin? <laughs> producer Kevin. You know, and then I don't know what you do when you do I right. I produced but... her as a title. Oh, now, see, okay, y'all was roasting me at first. Now you want to know how I did it. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, I'll tell you, Kenny. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'll tell you how we did it. So how do we get the animation working? So first and foremost, we have experimental support. We have experimental support for View Transitions API, which is like a new standard that's being developed in browsers, okay? 
Um, so to use it in your provide router, you just add with view transitions, just like that. And that was it. Experimental. It's experimental though. This is probably not for experimental. I can't I can't yell it enough because view right. transitions themselves are kind of like a very, very uh new thing and I think still kind of developing. Right. They're experimental, but so this is pretty fun. Um, I really I'm the only thing I'm, I'm not happy about for this stream is that I spent too much time on those tables, which I did not want to do, and I did it anyway. Um that's okay. But the the cooler thing that I think that people are missing is that I have a route parameter called text. And then in my answer component, I have an input called text. And what's amazing here, here's what's amazing about it. To, uh, there is no logic here that links those two together. There is no logic. There is no like um, RxJS, like looking for the stream of like changes. I'm not using looking at the, uh, what is it called? Activated route, or I'm not doing anything like to get this. Like I'm able to just get the input with input band, with input binding. And that's what I did with this last part with in component input binding. So now my uh, my route parameters are bound to my input. My input's a signal, and it's just so nice and pretty. It's smooth. And then I got the view transition. And then if I had some actual nice animation set, it'll work. So I'm going to redo this. I'm going to redo this so that way we can have it as a, uh, as, as a CSS grid because what I was trying to do here just really flopped with the table. I'm sure there's a way to do this with the table. I am 100% certain. I just don't know what it is, and I don't want to spend the time on it. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what I could do, Jeremy? I could, I could prepare my table. Like, I could prepare the data in the class for display. Sure. And then display it the way I want it to. Because right now, in the format that it's in, it, it'll just never do the right thing. But if I, pre, if I prepared it, I bet you I could do it. <laughs> So Chaos Monster in the chat went and actually did find an article about the color history and they, they sent it to you uh, on Twitter. I, I don't have a Twitter account anymore. I had deleted yeah. it when Elon Musk bought it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. I'm on, I'm on Mastodon. Nobody that you on the elephant in the room. Um, okay, friends, look, I've had a, a really good time with you all, but we got to let Jeremy get back to some work. I got to do some work. Peter, <laughs> listen, I love Flex, but you know what I'm leaning into this year? So the reason I'm even live coding, right? Some of you probably feeling like, man, why is he like, you know, having such a hard time? My job doesn't revolve enough around coding for me. And I was talking to Jeremy, like literally I said, I'm going to just do more coding this year, get back to my uh, engineering roots and just do more and more coding. So uh, it's only going to get more and more awesome from here. Uh, Jeremy, what are you playing? What are you watching? And what should the people check out this week? I'm playing Dave the Diver. Yeah. And you you go scuba diving and catch fish and then you serve the fish in your sushi shop and it's fun not an indie game but one indie game of the year in the game awards for 2023 despite being published by triple a south korean publisher nixon <laughs> <laughs> and okay. Uh, we were talking about history of HTML. This is actually, I'm going to recommend a story. If you do a Google search for dive into HTML5, you will get kind of this web book by Mark Pilgrim. Uh, one of the chapters in that, one of the very first chapters is a quite biased history of HTML. And there's an anecdote in there about the origins of the image element that I love. I really like this anecdote because it tells you a lot about how technology gets built and shipped in the world and i recommend that and as always i'll recommend dropout.tv that's what you're still watching the, the best streaming app that and taskmaster i watched a lot of taskmaster on youtube okay 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 yeah um i i, I second the notion for dropout tv i was watching it last week uh at home and we were just cracking up i mean i still think yeah like all those shows are great um i want to get more into some of the other shows but uh, the main ones game changers is you know just yeah. outstanding and uh yeah just really really good comedy all right so what am i watching what am i what am i playing what am i watching and then what i recommend i am uh, playing zelda breath of the wild with my little guy who keeps uh, coming in and or crying today um i've been playing that with him we're almost at the end i've decided that he doesn't need 100 percent completion i've decided that we've gotten enough you know we got enough and it's time to move on to Tears of the Kingdom. So we're going to be playing that. Uh, what am I watching? I actually just finished Beef on Netflix. 
uh, fantastic. And I'm trying to finish. What's that one with the giant monsters? The tight uh, Attack on Titan. I'm trying to finish Attack on Titan because I'm like the last ten episodes, and I'm tired of being sad. Um, <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> that show makes you so sad. I'm just tired of being sad. So I want it to be over. What I recommend people check out. Uh, I would say for you to check out anything. Um, Check out that conference. Uh, they have some some really cool stuff out there. That conference this last week. Check them out. Check out the live stream. Um, there was some free live stream. Check out some of the keynotes from that conference. There were some really good co uh, conversations. And I got to see Jan Nicholas, actually one of the Angular commu community members. Uh, he was there, and so it was really great to hang out. All right, uh, people are saying, uh, "Do the roar one more time." You know it. It was a great time to talk to you. Writing code is great. All right. It's been fantastic, friends. Listen, no matter what you use to build, no matter how long you take to build it, do me one, one big favor. Just one. Just one thing from you. Go build great apps. We'll see you the next time. Peace.